For most people, right. Aladdin, for most people, Turkey exceeds their expectations by a long mile. Not just by eh, an insignificant amount, by a long mile. Long mile. And that's not necessarily because Turkey is the greatest country on the face of Earth. And that's a subjective thing in itself. Right. What is great, what is not. Yet, the image of Turkey, the way people perceive Turkey from mm. outside, in my opinion, undervalues Turkey. This is why I think Turkey still um, represents excellent value for money. 100%. I don't just mean real estate. I mean, um, you know, from a touristic viewpoint, for, for, for many aspects. Hey guys, welcome back to another Straight Talk episode here at our Istanbul office with Cameron. Hello. Cameron, welcome. Um, from this angle, they're probably seeing this camera, but the reason why I put this camera right here is because I have a beautiful angle from this and I want people to look at it because we so really... Come, come again, why did you put that camera there? Because it's the, the lens that it has is um, it needs to be closer to you. It goes really? into that particular image, uh, but uh, it's it's... You know, it, it gives a better image. But don't you think that camera is dangerously too close to me? No, but that's okay. You, you look good, trust me. Let's let's cut to the chase and let's talk about a, um, something that's been a, a long time coming subject of ours. Um, in one of the previous episodes, we were, we were talking about... Um, what was the subject of the episode? Why Invest people should buy real assets. Yes, why people right. should buy real assets. At the end of the episode, we, we wind up talking about how undervalued Turkey is. And we said, you know what, That's uh, that, that would make a great straight talk topic. That's right. Yes. And here we are now, and we're here to discuss. Cameron, why do you think Turkey is undervalued? And what do you mean when you say undervalued? Oh, yeah. I think that's a question that actually begs to be answered. Because uh, since I said Turkey is undervalued, Quite a few people, actually, people, in, including people in in our own very office, they said to me, "Oh, you know, Turkey is not undervalued. Turkey is actually very nice." I said, "Well, you know what? T Turkey is a lovely country. Why why do you go on saying it is undervalued?" I said, "That's exactly what I meant. Actually, it is a lovely country, and it's undervalued, as in it's underrated, as in it's undiscovered." Mm. Okay, what I mean by undervalued is, uh, let me explain it this way, okay? It's a particularly sunny day, blue sky. You feel good, you woke up, you had your breakfast, a few hours have passed, right. and you're walking down the road, and then your eyes uh, almost unintentionally kind of drop on the window of your local patisserie, and there's this lovely, delicious-looking chocolate cake. Never seen anything like that before. And you have one look at it, and it's like love at first sight. You want to taste that chocolate cake. You walk in, you pay your 100 lira, 50 lira, however much a slice of cake is. Um, you grab it with full eagerness, and you bite it, and you taste it, and you're thoroughly disappointed. Because okay. what you thought it would be and the reality do not match. You had this very high expectation of what the cake would, the chocolate cake would taste like up mm. here, but reality was here. Right. It just let you down. Now, this is what I would call a negative expectation gap. Your expectation is here, but reality is here. Right. As far as Turkey is concerned, what I find with a great number of people, particularly with people who have no personal experience of Turkey, such as they never visited the country, or who have very little knowledge of Turkey, the expectation gap is the other way around. Their mm. expectation is kind of here, and we can argue and discuss why that is kind of here, but when they do, bite the chocolate cake right. called turkey the reality is here 
So this is like a positive expectation gap. Interesting. What, what they thought it would taste like and what it really tastes like once they have experienced it, there's a gap and it's a positive gap. That's why I say Turkey is undervalued. That's a very interesting That's point. That's why I call it undervalued. Y you're saying you're saying Turkey is exceeding people's expectations. For most people, right. Aladdin, for most people, Turkey exceeds their expectations by a long mile. Not just by eh, an insignificant amount, by a long mile. Long mile. And that's not necessarily because Turkey is the greatest country on the face of earth, and that's a subjective thing in itself, right. what is great, what is not, yet the image of Turkey, the way people perceive Turkey from outside, mm. in my opinion, undervalues Turkey. So, so what, what you're referring to is, 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 is basically marketing. Some places well, marketing. and some countries around marketing. the world have been over-marketed, because it's been imposed to you, Paris, the city of love, this, that, and all you that. know, since you, since you grow, you, you think that it's, oh, oh my God, it's a D Disneyland where 10 million people live. You know, that, that's, that's your expectation when you're going to Paris. Yes. But when you, when you go to the underground, when, when you see, you know, not so nice things about that particular city, um, I experienced that myself. Uh, my expectations were here, and, yeah. and it came all the way down to here. Yeah. And a lot of people in the West, they, they, they do not know anything about Turkey. And it's, it's very hard for a lot of people to point Turkey on the map either. So it's... Th well, appa this apparently, over 60% right. of Americans cannot point Turkey on the map. Right. And, and they actually think that we ride camels. Right, and couple that with the negative yeah. um, propaganda on the Western media towards Turkey cetera, and everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's um, people don't know. So when they come here, they expect Turkey to be this very primitive country, you know, very dangerous and very, you know, be because that's all they have been uh, presented <laughs> as news. And when they come yeah. here, they see Istanbul, they see how modern things are, the infrastructure, the, the four seasons, the, the beauty of the country and everything. Yeah, they think, yeah, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, all yeah. this for this price and everything? Yeah. When something is undervalued, okay, when the expression undervalued is used in the correct way, like what I think I'm using, it, like I use it for Turkey, I think I'm using it correctly, then really and truly for those who come in to either invest in the country or buy a home in the country or come in as tourists, mm -hmm. the reward they actually receive for going through that experience is actually much higher. Right. Because the more undervalued, truly undervalued something is, the better value for money it will represent. Right. From the perspective of the person experiencing it. Right. So this is why, and this is, uh, yeah, this is why I think Turkey still um, represents excellent value for money. 100%. I don't just mean real estate. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, from a touristic viewpoint, uh, for, for, for many aspects, Turkey still represents um, excellent value for money. I remember when... Um you know Chevalier Island in Fethiye? Yes. It's a beautiful island. Um, I went there to interview one of our clients who we built a house for. Ten years ago. Ten yes. years ago. Uh, we took the boat, we sailed onto the island, and I met the guy, <coughs> really nice guy, lovely guy. What a setting, isn't it, Chevalier Island? Amazing. What a setting. Amazing. It's just, it's out I, of I the world. It's, it's more than amazing. It's, it's idyllic. It's, it, it, it is... Out of this world. That, 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 that's the only way I could explain it. It's uh, the, the, the sunset, the, the, the sky, the islands dotted in front of you, the whole ambiance of serenity. In fact, one of the villas we built there is called Villa Serenity Right. Um, for that reason. The, the, the whole package there is out of this world. Right. And those villas we built, we, we built three villas right. right on water on Chevalier Island where you can actually... You can actually um, drive your boat, um, come and moor your boat, just like a taxi, straight in front of your home, a couple of steps up, and you are in your living room. Right. The view is out of this world. 
And you know what? The prices our clients paid for those villas. It's funny prices, I know. At the time, right. you funny. couldn't buy half that villa, half what they got anywhere in Spain, Italy or France for... Twice as much. You'd pay three times as much, not twice, three times. And that is, if indeed you could find such an unspoiled, undiscovered setting anywhere in Spain, France or Italy. Right. So I asked Which him I don't this think question. You can. Right. I, I asked him this question, exact this question. Yeah. Uh, I asked him, um, and, and actually, well, why don't we you know, run that clip so, so, so the audience should listen to it? Just show it like a five to ten seconds right. of the ambiance of Chevalier. Right. Since I talk so emotionally about yeah. it, so let people see it. Yeah. Yeah. For many people, for many Brits, as far as I'm aware, some of the locations to, you know, have a summer home and, you know, um, either live an expat life is Spain, Italy, and even Greece. A lot of people go to Greece, especially. Yeah. Um, what actually motivated you to come to this part of the world? Because Turkey, this country doesn't really have all that glamorous image as Greece or Spain does, right? Well, I, I think it's just undiscovered. Yeah. I mean, if I look at uh, the house we were able to build here and the uh, seafront location and the value for money that that gets here in Turkey compared to other parts of the world, it's fantastic. The people are lovely. The food's amazing, the weather's incredible, uh, Fetier, the local town, is vibrant, exciting, and it's a town that's alive the whole year round, not just in the summer. So I think it's a, it's a perfect undiscovered gem. Well, so you heard the statement. He says that Turkey is, you know, it's, it's, it's an undiscovered gem yeah. for, uh, for a lot of people, especially people who want to buy a home in yeah. the south coast and everything, when you compare it to um, all the other countries. Do you agree with this statement? Well, I'm sure you do. Well, well, yeah. well, well I do. I mean, to, so to, to what extent do you? I mean, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Turkey is not Himalayan peaks being undiscovered as such. Or Turkey is not some Tibetan outback, obviously. Turkey is a very well-known country. No, no, I know, I know. You know, it receives in excess of 40, 50 million visitors a year. Right. So <laughs> this is not necessarily the, the mark of an undiscovered country. Yet, he's right, it is undiscovered in many aspects. Mm. Um, because it's very easy and very doable in Turkey to step out of the mainstream. There is mainstream tourism. Let's look at it from a tour touristic and tourism viewpoint. There is mainstream tourism where people in groups, they come to Istanbul, they do the same thing day in, day after, they follow the group, you know, they go to Dolmabahce, they go to Top Kapı Palace, they go to under, what is it, underwater cistern or whatever it's called, the under city, basilica the, the basilica cistern and, you know, all those little landmarks or touristic attractions all over the country and they do, that. that's the mainstream. Yeah, if you do the mainstream, you do the mainstream. Yeah? And there are millions of people every year who do just that. However, in Turkey, you can very easily step out of the mainstream. And the moment you step out of the mainstream, there is a different layer of this country, culturally, geographically, socially, that will reveal itself to you. It's very accessible, very easily accessible, you don't have to drive to the Himalayas to access it. It's in Turkey, a step away from the mainstream. Yet, it's so gorgeous and so beautiful. For example, Bodrum. You know I love Bodrum. Right. And I spend a lot of time there every year. Um, Bodrum is a mainstream place to a great extent. Um, it, 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 it is one of the most touristic places as far as domestic tourism is concerned. And, and it also attracts a, a great number of um, foreign tourists on a yearly basis. Yet, even in Bodrum, you can get into your boat and drive just 20 minutes boat ride, boat drive, outside the mainstream of Bodrum waters, and you will be bay hopping, island hopping, one after another, one after another, unspeakable 
spoiled nature. Villages where it will feel as though time has stood still for hundreds of years. The traditions, the way people wash their fish in the water before they serve it to you. This whole, you know, ambiance is really, truly spectacular. It appeals to your taste buds. It appeals to your inside from, from, a, from an ambiance and from, from, from a, a na nature and spiritual viewpoint. These are the things that Turkey still has. So I, I, I have one data which um, is, uh, is, is very relative. It, it makes things easy to understand how value, undervalued uh, the Turkish real estate is. Uh, when you look at price per square meter in the city centers of around the major metropolises around the world, we're talking about London, Paris, Rome, Barcelona, Istanbul, Dubai. You're going to find that there's a stark difference between price per square meter in Istanbul and price per square meter, say, in places like London, Toronto, Canada. And, and Canada is, um, is being talked about as a, as a highly saturated market where the prices are skyrocketing. But the prices, yeah. I mean, yes, they were talking to a couple uh, know, straight from, from Canada, Canada yeah. and things they were saying. They were saying, okay, if Turkey is undervalued, it is, um, uh, but Canada is, is overvalued, overpriced. They're basically right. saying that the average man uh, is now completely priced out of the market. So it's right. very, very difficult for the average man in, in Toronto and other big cities in Canada to actually get onto the property ladder right. to, to buy their first home. Right. Um, and a lot of people can relate to that. If you guys can relate to that, please share your thoughts in the comment section down below. The ones who are living in uh, Canada, uh, US, UK, in these countries, please share your thoughts about your real estate uh, market over there. Yes. because How affordable right, it is. Right. From the viewpoint of the first-time home buyer, which is a very, very important segment. Right. And today you shared... Uh, a very interesting piece of um, data. Yes, an article, I, I, I sent you a table, didn't I? Right, you yeah. did. And th this table doesn't have Istanbul. So uh, I'm going to ask uh, our graphic designers to put Istanbul into it to see how you know the country would compare. The table looks at the average prices in the city centers of New York, I think Toronto, Dubai, mm -hmm. London, Paris... I think these are the names on that right. on that list. It basically says how much real estate could you buy for one million dollars in right. prime locations. Yeah, in, but it looks prime. at average prices. It doesn't look at the high end segment. Right. Neither does it look at uh, kind of the most affordable. It looks right. at I think it looks at the mid range city center. Right. It talks about the square footage. Square footage okay. as opposed to square meters. We, uh, we we tend to always refer to square me meterage, but. Right. Um, in some countries, uh, people talk in terms of s square footage. You're right. Right. Yeah. So London, for example, a million dollar dollars would get you 329 square feet. 329 square feet. In, in a prime location. Which is... Nothing. Which is... A studio uh, something like in Istanbul. 30 square meters. Right. So a million dollars will get you... Did you say London? Yes. A million dollars will get you at average prices in, in, in the center of London, 30 square meters of real estate. Right. 30. Three zero. In, in Los Angeles, 454 square feet. Again, Which I, 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 I guess is roughly around 43 square meters. Right. I'm, I'm quickly going down on the list. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. I see Madrid and Mumbai both scoring around 1,100 square feet. Which is about 110 square meters. Right. So in Mumbai, India, today, uh, 100 square meters of an apartment in a prime location, I'm assuming this is prime buildings as well. Would Central, yeah. Right. City centers. Would, would set you back around a million dollars, yes. a two-bedroom apartment. Yes. What about Dubai? What's the rate? Dubai, Dubai? is uh, 1.4 thousand. 1,400. Right. Which is roughly... three-bedroom apartment, you 140 can say. square meters. Right. A three-bedroom, you can say. Now, Istanbul isn't in here, but I believe Istanbul scores between Dubai and Cape Town. And I believe it is closer to Cape Town than... I'd say to you, to Istanbul Dubai. would be around f three... 
to 4,000 square foot, square feet, for, which is about uh, 350 square meters. But I, I, th I think what this uh, particular data is showing is, is, is the luxury higher end. Of no, I don't think so. I think it actually looks at average, city center average. You know, we keep referring to affordable luxury city center. Um, I think this table looks at a hair above that. Okay. Not necessarily affordable, but average luxury, but average luxury, not the high end. So do you agree with a million dollar buying you a 30 square meters of a place in central London? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is it that high, the prices? It is. Yeah. So if you look at central London, kind of, you know, the really desirable central parts of London, we're looking at it, looking at that, and we compare it to, say, uh, you know, comparable parts of Istanbul, it seems to me that the price difference is more than one to five. Mm -hmm. In other words, like for like, central London appears to be more than five times as expensive as central Istanbul. More than five times as expensive. Now, compare it to average incomes. If you look at average incomes, you will find that the average income in London compared to Istanbul is about one to three. The scale is about one to three. So uh, London, uh, Londoners earn three times as much as Istanbulites do mm -hmm. on an average basis, com you know, average to average. Now, having said that property prices in London are more than five times as expensive, mm -hmm. that means that in London, a lot more people in terms of percentages are priced out of the market mm -hmm. in terms of affordability compared to Istanbul. Which means for people of Istanbul, real estate, being able to buy a home in Istanbul for Istanbulites is that much easier mm -hmm. compared to London. Although we know for a fact that Istanbulites these days are being slowly priced out of the market as well. Yeah, it's not very affordable anymore. Yes, but so uh, you can now imagine the situation in places like Toronto, like our clients yesterday from Toronto so were talking about. Is this about going it. to be the yeah. unavoidable destiny of Istanbul? Unfortunately, what's happening in I Toronto, so, what's yes. happening in London, yeah. New York, yeah. Uh, yeah. Madrid, in, in, in major metropolitan cities around the world, is this going to be the destiny of Istanbul? In my opinion, in the foreseeable future, yes. Foreseeable future being the next 20, 30 years, yes. Um, now, what will happen thereafter, I have my own ideas as to what's going what's to happen mm -hmm. to the distribution of wealth and not so much well more than that the the distribution of population um, around cities as opposed to less congested areas i think there'll be a shift there'll be a change in that which we're already beginning to see with you know the ability to work from home you know and all those technologies coming in and i think all over the next 20 30 years these will only further like further accelerate so my viewpoint is that 30 years from today the premiums will not be in city city centers what we think is you know the most premium places to buy property and to live in such as like for istanbul nishantashu shishli um, I don't know, maybe Maslak and Levant, you know, Bomonti, these are yeah. the Bomonti. These are not only the most dense parts of the city, but they are also the most desirable parts of the city, hence the most expensive parts of the city as well. My view is 30 years from now, it will be completely the other way around. You believe so? That's my view. That's my view. What do I base it on? 
uh, that's another discussion. You, you, <laughs> that, let's not go into because you've, we you've, need we need very wide time for right, this. Right, you've been operating but, in the industry for the past twenty years, yeah. and and you, you have traveled around the world quite extensively, and you have spent many many years um, in in UK, in London particularly, where you also did engage in real estate there. So you you, you have uh, comparative uh, knowledge in that uh, particular thing, and that um, I think that's where your experience is coming from, and. One, let, let me, let's, let's materialize what we're saying, okay? The apartment that we saw yesterday. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Oh, I've got, I've got my heart set on that, so I think okay. I'm going to go for it. All right. So I think I'm going to go for it. So, so what happened yesterday is um, <laughs> th there's, there's a tower that... Let's um, not name it. Let's not okay, name let's it. Okay, let's not name the tower. Let, let's not name the tower, but there's, there's, a, there's a tower where I have been living in for the past... I mean, in well, addition you, you're to decoding it now because if anyone was to go back to your, what do you might call it, straight talks from two years ago, or one and a half year ago, you know, anyone bothered to check and stalk you, they'll know where you live, because it's in your videos. Right, it is. So uh, don't I, decode I, it. No, I still, I still have the, I still have the forest estate, but um, we wanted to, you know, in about six months ago, we wanted to be closer to the office. We wanted to get ourselves, a, you know, a central dwelling. Th that particular town, when we were there yesterday, I, I, I love the lifestyle. I, and I, I live there and, and I like the property. And you saw this, how big was it? 195, 195 square. 195 square meters. Or right. Kind of a... Penthouse. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say penthouse, but say it fe feels like a penthouse. Right. A an but amazing the view estate. is out of this world. Where you were really, Ooh. you wanted to buy the place on the spot. Now... In, in terms of you know making sense of these two things, what we're talking about is a prime real estate yeah. in Istanbul, in in one of the most liveliest, trendiest, mm -hmm. central locations of Istanbul, Absolutely. in one of the most luxurious. Places. One of my favorites. Right, a place in Istanbul. How much would that cost? And take that place and put it anywhere around Istanbul, in in, in London. Let me New York, let me tell you perhaps. something. The apartment we saw yesterday, as I said, pick it up, put it in New York, put it in London, central London, or around the central park or New York. Um, I'd say to you that apartment will be anything from seven, eight to twelve million dollars. Um, in Istanbul, I expect it to be priced at around one tenth of the price. One tenth of the price. About one tenth of the price. Wow. Now, that's what we're talking about. Right. And, and Alaaddin will, will, will just show like a five, six second right. coverage of the view of the apartment and, and of the living room, which is what did it for me. It's got like 70, 80 square Cameron's meters. Cameron's really interested room. in that place. He might I'll make love it, it just his next time. I love it, yeah. I, I love it. Right. Um, that's why I keep on saying Istanbul is still under undervalued. I well, Turkey is undervalued all I, over. I hundred percent agree with you. Thank you very much for this no episode. Uh, the things that we talked about, we talked about a lot of things actually. I'm going to combine it all together and put it all together. But the main sentence, the the, the main idea of it was: Is Turkey undervalued, undervalued, and why was it undervalued, and what do we meant by saying that? And Thank you very much for explaining this. I, I hope it made sense to uh, some of you guys. So um, thank you very much for this. And really, if you have any questions with this WhatsApp number, you can reach us. Comment section. Fantastic. Please let out your ideas. Thank you very much and see you thank in the you. next episode.